Hello, I'm Coach Matt Kramer, and I'm here to talk about the full court offense course I'm offering. Full court offense is one of my favorite aspects of basketball to talk about because of the profound impact it's had on my career. I've been in coaching for 31 years, 18 of those as a head high school basketball coach. And of those 18 years as a head coach, 15 of those years, I coached at what I would consider to be the average public high school. For three years, I had an opportunity to cross, the, cross a couple of state borders and head down to Atlanta, Georgia, and coach a program that was being recognized on a national level, Milton High School. At Milton, I had a different kind of player. I had a couple ESPN Top 20 kids, one Chris Lewis, who went on to Harvard and was their MVP for two years. One was Alex O'Connell, who was a 6'7 guard that went on to play at Duke during the Zion Williamson years before he finished his career at Creighton. Alex is currently playing over in Europe right now professionally after spending one year with the Sacramento Kings G League team in Stockton. The reason I mention those kids is because whether I was coaching those ESPN Top 20 kids in Georgia, going against other nationally ranked, ranked, ranked programs, or coaching against kids in, in, in gyms surrounded by the cornfields of Ohio, we use the same base approach to our full court offense. And one of the nice things about being able to sit here in front of you today and offer this course is to make sure that everybody understands it doesn't matter what level kid you're coaching in high school. This stuff will work if it's applied and taught effectively. Now, the course is really a, a, a kind of a, a blending or synthesizing of three different items that I've written over the course of the last year. The first piece is what I call my fire fast break concepts or my fire fast break philosophy. In other words, the way that we run our fast break. In that particular item, the main focus is on building the running game from the ground up. And certainly there are some X's and O's and some organizational things that go with that on court. But one of the most important things that we approach in that first item, the fire fast break philosophy, is building a running mindset. Over the years, I've had many coaches come to me and say, hey coach, how do you get your kids to play that fast? And my response is very simple. We play that fast in practice all the time. It's something that has been instilled in their blood. And they have that mindset when they walk on the floor, that regardless of who we're playing or what that team is doing, that we will be able to get into the open court and utilize our fire fast break to get early offense shots throughout the game. The second piece of the course is some, what I call, a lot of people call secondary actions. I prefer to call them early offensive actions that we get when teams do a concerted, do a, a very good job and make a concerted effort of getting back on defense to balance the floor. Of course, when you run, the other team's going to know that you're a running team. And over the years, what I've found is when teams are not willing to engage us in running, what oftentimes they will do, and this is no bit of genius, they'll send three or four guys back on, our, on their shot so that they get, make sure to get defensive balance to force us into a half-court game. That's fine. Okay, We will continue to try to run and pick and choose our spots. In games like that, the score will oftentimes be lower, and a run, instead of it being 14-4, to four, may end up being 8-2 to two or 8 to nothing. Meantime, as we continue to attack and look for those opportunities to get out in what we call our free time in that initial phase of our fast-break approach, when teams, teams do get back and they do get great balance against us, we'll flow into a number of early actions so that we can still hit the defense while they're retreating, trying to get matched up and trying to get organized. One of the things that we want to make sure that we do between the first and the second packages that I'm talking about here is that ne we never want to let the defense jog back down the floor, point to us, line us up, and be ready to feel like they're going to defend us the way that they want to defend us. We want to make them defend us on our terms. If they want to put some guys back, that's fine. If they want to try to run with us, that's fine too. Either way, we're not going to ever walk the ball up the floor, call out a set play, and let them get set and comfortable with what they think they're, what they think they're going to get from us. Third piece of the full court offense package is my press offense. And I say my press offense, it's probably not the proper way of saying it because it's kind of a collection of things that I've learned over the course of my coaching career. Some as a head coach, but some certainly as, a, as, as, a, as an assistant. Like I said, I coached for 31 years. Only 18 of those were as a head coach. And I spent 10 years as an assistant before I got my first head coaching job at the age of 30. I was fortunate in my coaching career as an assistant coach to coach for three Hall, a Hall of Fame coaches here in the state of Ohio. And from each of those, I learned certain things. I've also studied the game extensively with some of the best college coaches in the country and even a couple guys from the NBA. 
And so one of the things that I have chosen to do or I've found is very effective over the years is to make sure that my press offense is very much connected with my full court transition, fire, fast break offense. In other words, we want to make sure that our players understand that when a team presses us, we're not running a press breaker. We're, we're getting to a situation where we have some concepts and we're going to try to attack them out of those press offense concepts, not to get the ball across half court to reset, but rather to attack these teams in space while they're pressing so that we can get good shooting opportunities, good scoring opportunities before the defense gets set. Again, it's all a matter of philosophy. And yes, I do think there's a time in a game, depending on score and clock, where you break a press, and if you don't have the exact shot you're looking for, you kick it back out and you run some clock. However, within the, within the confines and the flow of a game, if a team, say, goes to a 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarter court press in the second quarter of a game that's still competitive, just to get us to slow down, we don't want them to let, us, we don't want to let them slow us down. So we're going to have something for that particular press that allows us to continue to attack to score. The object, again, is to attack to score. Diamond press, attack it to score. Man-to-man -man full court press, attack it to score. One, two, two, three-quarter court press, attack it to score, and so on and so forth. Now, again, that's easier said than done, but like I said, over the course of time, I've had an opportunity to put together what I feel is definitely the most comprehensive press offense package that is connected to a fast break concept so that the team who is attacking the press continues to have success getting the ball off the floor and finding great scoring opportunities before the defense is able to reset. That's kind of my full court philosophy. So, Coach, what makes you such an expert on full court offense? Well, I will tell you this, and I don't think that this is unusual. Uh, that really, the way that we run, the way that we kind of evolved into a running team at Fairless High School, a small Division II school just outside of Canton, Ohio, in Northeast Ohio, was necessity. We, we simply did not have the bodies, big, strong bodies, that some of the other programs we had, that, that, we, that we were playing had. And so what we needed to do was rather than continue to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and slug it out with these teams that had a little bit bigger, stronger athlete and, and lose games because we were just not able to get enough shots up, we tried to change the game. And between the 2006 and 2007 seasons, after studying a lot of film and seeing all the success that we had when we did get in the open court against pressing teams, and seeing how bad we struggled oftentimes when we played bigger, stronger teams that didn't press us, but packed it back in the paint, got out real hard on our guards, contested our shooting, and, and made us do things that physically we weren't as comfortable with, I decided that we were going to switch to, at the time, what we called a Phoenix Suns pace. And so between the 2006 and 2007 seasons, our off-season, our summertime, which is something that I would suggest anybody gets involved with this during, because it's the easiest time to make changes, we decided that we were going to make a concerted effort and a full commitment to plan at a Phoenix Suns pace. Now, if you look at NBA history and you look back at that time, that was before some of the things that you're seeing today in the NBA where all the teams are going up and down the floor shooting, shooting three-point shots at a fast pace. It was a different time. Back then, the idea of seven seconds or less from Coach D'Antoni and the Phoenix Suns was a revolutionary idea at the NBA level. We just took it and adapted it to the high school level. And we decided that we don't have Steve Nash and we don't have a lot of the guys that obviously NBA teams have. And the Phoenix Suns were stock loaded with a bunch of talent and athletic guys at the time. But what we did have were some pretty good vari vari uh, variations of and versions of that kind of player at the high school level. And so we spent that offseason just going up and down the floor and playing really, really fast. So when we look at this course and we take a look at the first piece, which is the fire fast break philosophy. The first thing that I would suggest any coach to do, and if you're very serious about looking to ramp up your pace in order to change the game this off season, take a look at that item first. And before you do anything else with any of the, of the, of the secondary offense or the, or the flow offense, whatever you want to call it, when you get into a half court game, get really good at getting up and down the floor fast. It is much easier to slow your team down. Okay, once you've got them playing at a certain pace, then it is to turn them up and make them play faster. So again, the first thing here, and the reason that I'm talking to you here today, is because the offseason is coming, and that is the best time to go ahead and, and make a commitment to this kind of stuff if you're truly interested in it. Now, as far as the press offense goes, what makes me a, a, an expert, 
besides the great coaches that I worked for and the time that I put in the game and the studying I've done, is the fact that, quite frankly, we went through a really difficult rebuilding phase in my first head coaching job. And when you're going through a really difficult rebuilding phase and you're not as good as the teams you're playing, oftentimes you get pressed. And if you can't handle that press, oftentimes you get blown out. So again, like I said, it's so many, much, many, many times the case when it comes to coaching. Necessity was kind of the mother of invention when it came to this press offense. So what you're going to find with the press offense is not just your standard press break, but you're also going to find different entry points and you're going to find different counter actions, just like you would see in a half-court game, and different late-game situation sets that will get you opportunities to get layups against defenses that are overplaying and, and, and are desperate late in games, and pressure releases that you probably won't find in another press offense package. So with the press offense package, you can take a little, you can take a lot, you can take the whole thing, you can look at it and decide you don't really like any. I would be stunned if there wasn't something in there, even for the most accomplished coach, when it comes to adding something to the package. But in the end, I will say this. Like I said before, press offense, I hate to say saved my career, but when we decided to start playing fast at Fairless, it changed the landscape of high school basketball at Division II level in Northeast Ohio. And it took us from being an also-ran program into one of the state's elite Division II programs the remainder of the time that I was there, from 2006 to 2008. I, I believe that. And yes, yeah, certainly, we had some great kids that had bought in, and I love those kids today, still like their family. 17 years later, almost to the date, after the day we walked up those ladders and cut down that district championship net. But I will tell you that it was also the philosophy and changing and getting them in situations where they could be most successful. And that success, a big part of it, was getting them in the open court and committing to our fire fast break running game. I took that same philosophy with me when I went to Atlanta, Georgia, and I was coaching Chris Lewis, who played two years at Harvard and was the MVP there, a 16 ESPN top 20 kid, and Alex O'Connell, who played three years at Duke and is currently playing overseas in Europe after spending a year in the G League. Like I said before, one of the reasons that I can sit here with absolute confidence and share these ideas and think they can make an impact on your program is because they've made an impact on every program I've coached from those cornfields in Ohio all the way down to the city of Atlanta. And it's been something that I, I really, really have enjoyed sharing with people and coaching on the court. And it's something that I think, too, can make a profound impact on your program. One final thing that I want to say here. I've won a whole bunch of games in my career, but I've also lost a whole bunch of games in my career. So I consider myself what I call part of the 98% club. And the 98% club of high school coaches is the group that spends a lifetime tires, tirelessly trying to serve young men and young women while striving tirelessly to make their program relevant and eventually put their programs in a position to where they're able winning, to win a championship, but also to serve those kids so that you make a long-lasting impact on them beyond their high school and their playing days. That's kind of what my coaching philosophy has been. And again, I don't sit here from an ivory tower telling you that I know everything there is to know about basketball. A lot of the things that I share with you here come after taking some lumps along the way. I do come here, though, telling you that when this stuff is taught properly, that it will make an impact on your program, it will help you improve, and it will be something that I think that you enjoy coaching. Finally, I want to mention that when you purchase this course, you have me as often as you need me throughout your, your implementation and any time down the road for free consultations. We can do those consultations face we can do those consultations face to face over a Zoom, or we can do them over phone, or we can do them simply by texting back and forth or emailing back and forth. One of the things I believe in here very deeply, okay, is you continue to make relationships with coaches around the country. And for this stuff to really impact you and your program as a coach, I feel like you have to have direct contact with me so that you can ask any questions on the material that you're reading about that doesn't make any sense to you. I will tell you this too. I will be very honest with you. Some people, the running game is 100% for. Some people, okay, as far as coaches go, become a little nervous with the freedom that it allows their players to have and the lack of control that we have as coaches. I, too, like to call a set play out every now and then. I'm not saying that we don't do that. All I'm saying is, is that once your team gets really good at that, okay, the stuff that we're talking about here with the full court position stuff and the way that they're handling that, you're going to find out that you want to call plays less and less as time goes on because it empowers your players to do what we want players to be able to do, and that's make great decisions in real time on the floor and be able to go out there and make a play and know the coach has confidence in them to do that 
when the time comes for them to do it. So that's kind of my, my full court offense course in a nutshell. Again, I, I'm excited about it. I think it's something that can really, really help coaches anywhere. And again, one of the things that I like best about this part of my career is the time that I spend talking with coaches around the country, not just about these ideas, but about, what, with, about any idea that you guys can think of when it comes to basketball. Thanks for listening, and I hope for those of you that join the course, you find it valuable, rewarding, and I hope it makes as profound an impact on your coaching career as it has made on mine.